Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel, Jamie Fran Colors. I am Jamie, and today we are going to color another mushroom picture. I'm very excited about this. So, um, we've had a mini series about coloring mushrooms where we did one of these types of mushrooms in six videos, so one per video. And today we're going to take what we learned in those videos and apply it to another uh, picture. So um, this was Hannah Carlson's Daydreams and it would be very easy to take this and just apply it over here on this picture or another one of her pictures because the style is exactly the same, same type of mushrooms. But, but I thought it would be more fun to take this beautiful book Saga Ock Sogner by um, Emily Lindhall Oberg. And this book is a beautiful, fun, creative book that has been out of print, but is now again in print. And you can get it at Printworks. I will have the link down below. So I thought while it's um, in print and while you it's available and you can find it, let's do a picture in this book. And she has this picture here that has several mushrooms, and I thought we could take three of the mushrooms that we have on this page and apply it over here. So, let's see if I can situate this so you can kind of see both pages. There we go. And it's also a very cloudy fall day here, and I'm hoping that I have enough light and it looks okay. All right, so, what I'm thinking is that maybe this flat mushroom here and this one that's hidden back here, we would do this red mushroom and then we would take this yellow mushroom and maybe do this one here and this one here and then we would do these three, the purple mushroom. It's kind of what I'm thinking and so um, yeah, and then we'll do the rest of the other vegetation and the girl as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color one of each mushroom for you on this page and then you can color the rest on your own. You can decide where you want to put them. You don't have to put them in the same spots as I do. You may have different reasoning than I do. That's what we'll do and then we'll do the rest of the page. So let's get situated and we'll get started. All right, we have zoomed in on this mushroom here and we're gonna do it the red or the video one that we did. And we're gonna start with the stock. And so we're gonna pull beige 997. And as always with all of my videos, any material that I am using is on the screen. And then everything is also listed down in the description box below with links so you can find what you're looking for. And um, yes, so again, we're gonna start with beige 997. And we're going to base coat this ring and stock. The mushroom, so just light pressure. Look how far back I'm holding my pencil. That means I'm not putting any pressure at all. Very light, okay. All right, then let's take our 70% warm gray. We wanna put this in the shadow. So there's gonna be a shadow up here underneath the cap. Okay. And then there's gonna be a shadow underneath the ring. This little fringy part is the ring. And then we're going to go underneath this leaf right here. And then we're just going to put a little bit on that side and then down behind those leaves down there as well. Okay, still again light pressure. All right, then we're going to take our warm gray 30%. We're gonna go over the top of that 70% and just go past it. 
Still make a medium light pressure, a little more pressure than I was using before to help blend, but still not a lot of pressure, just a medium light pressure. Okay, then we can take, go back to our beige and go over the whole thing, and this time adding a little more pressure than we did the first time. So a medium light pressure. See, I'm not, still not up here. Back here on my pencil, not adding too much pressure, but a little more, just a medium light. Circular motions. And blending those colors together. Okay. All right. Then we want to take our black and get right up underneath the cap of the mushroom just to add that deep dark shadow. Okay, and then let's get right under the ring as well. Just in those little pockets of it. Okay, then let's take the beige one more time. And just make sure that that is blended as much as we want it to be. Okay. Okay, good, we're really zoomed in, so this is a pretty small little stock. All right, so that's that one. Then we wanna do the cap of the mushroom. We're not gonna worry about the, the dots, we're just gonna color over the top of them and then we'll go back in and add um, a white gel pen, this is Uniball, to put the white back in, so we're not worried about that. So we're going to take canary yellow and we're going to base coat the whole top with canary yellow and again look how far back I'm holding it I'm not adding pressure this is very light just a nice coat something to get us started so it's not white anymore and we don't have to worry about it we just put this yellow on to get us started Okay, yellow's on, we put it down on the edge as well, and all over the top. Okay, now we have to decide where our light source is going to be, and I think it's going to be over here. So we want to make this side of the mushroom lighter, and then this side of the mushroom darker. Okay, so we're going to take our orange, this is orange, 918, and we're going to leave a little bit of yellow right in here, but we're going to cover everything else orange. So I'm going to start over here and just, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm back on my pencil, I'm not putting pressure, I'm just going to lightly put in this orange, just like we did in our tutorial. And I want this orange all the way around to the edge here because it's underneath and it's not, it's going to be darker. So let's go ahead and put this orange all on the edge there. Okay. Now I can go over here and just put the orange down lightly, not worried about those dots.
Okay, we're getting to where we want to leave the yellow, but I do want to bring this orange right around the edge really lightly and just a little bit, just to make our mushroom look a little more rounded. Okay. And then we'll leave the rest of that yellow. Okay, then we're gonna grab our carmine red. And we're going to put it, we wanna leave some orange around that yellow, but we want the rest of it to add this carmine. So we're gonna start over here. We'll bring it down the edge, cause it needs to be darker than the top. So we know we want this down here. Still light pressure. Did that go dark? Oh goodness. Okay. I said it's a cloudy day here and I'm hoping my lighting is not horrendous because of it. Okay, put a little there and then on the bottom. Okay, and then we're gonna leave this with the orange. We want that orange, so we're going to start this red maybe in here. So I'm just going to kind of put an indication. I kind of want it here. Kind of works its way around a little bit. Just lightly. Maybe bring it in a little bit there on the edge. We don't want to cover up all that orange. So we want, okay, and then from there, we know we can color all of this in with the carmine. Okay, then we're going to grab our Crimson Lake 925 and we're going to bring this, we know we want, this is our darkest color, we know we want it over here. Dark. And then maybe about here, let's just bring it along the bottom of it. right along the top. And maybe this one right over here, because it's way back. Okay. All right, then we want this all to be light. 
we want kind of light up to somewhere in here. So let's kind of give ourselves a little bit of an indication. Okay, and then we'll color in all of this with the Crimson Lake. If you need to turn your book to get a good angle, do it. I'm trying to keep mine straight for you. Okay, now we've put a light layer on and now we want to darken it up. So we're going to go over it again. This time I'm going to use a medium light pressure. Just put some more in there. And just go over the top again. We'll put some more colors over it so we don't have to get it perfect yet, but I just want a little more. Especially over here. Okay. Then we're going to work our way backwards. So let's grab the Carmine Red again and we're going to go over everywhere we have the Carmine Red. So we have it here. Indication there. Then we grab the orange, we go everywhere that we have orange. I'm using a medium light pressure, so more than we did the first time we put the orange down. We really want to start blending those colors together. And we, and we really need some, a uh, little bit of pressure to get that. All right, so let's get this orange here that we put on the edge.
Okay, I'm going to go to a really soft pressure, very light pressure, and just get the edge of this yellow so that we don't have a harsh line. Okay. All right, then we're going to grab our canary yellow, and we're going to go over the whole cap of the mushroom with this. And as I get in this where we don't have any color, just the really light yellow, I want my pressure to be fairly light so that I don't. And then as I get into the other colors, I'm going to give a little more pressure, get into that medium pressure, really help blend our colors together. Now, if you can't use a lot of pressure, that's okay, we've talked about other ways of blending, then just lighten your pressure, put down a couple coats of the yellow on top, and then grab your Gamsol or your Odorless Mineral Spirits and use that to blend those colors together, okay? You don't have to use a lot of pressure to get a good result. I mean, there's other tools to help you with that. So there's that mushroom. Um, go ahead and do any of the other mushrooms you want this color. I think I'm just going to do this little one back here, this color. And then um, if you need to blend some more, use whatever blending tool you want. If you want to use the lightest color, if you want to use a white um, colored pencil, if you want to use a colorless blender, or if you want to use Gamsol because you don't can't put the pressure in, you can use Gamsol on either a paper stump or a um, or a paintbrush. Um, just make sure you don't have to your paintbrush isn't too saturated with it. So it, to do that, and then at the very end, after we have all the mushrooms done, then we'll go in and put the white Posca paint pen. I don't want to do that until all my mushrooms are done. So go ahead and finish this color of mushroom, and then we will move on to the next one. Okay, now we're going to look at the doing this mushroom that's very red at the top but very quickly goes to a yellow, orangish yellow color. Okay, so I've done one, I wanted that one over there, and now let's do this one here. Okay, so he's got just a little bit of a stem or a stalk. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we just want to put down <coughs> put down some eggshell, which my eggshell pencil is about shot, but I think it will work for enough for this little thing. Okay, and then we want to take some 70% French gray. Put right under the cap and right down along that left side, 
end at the bottom. Okay, and then we'll take 20% French gray and just blend that out a little bit. Okay, and then right back to the eggshell to finish blending that out. So my eggshell pencil was not, <coughs> let me see if I can show you. Okay, so this is my eggshell pencil, and if you look at the pencil itself there, you can see that the lead is not centered in the wood or centered in the barrel. It's very much off to the right side there. You've got a lot more space of wood on this side than you do on this side. You see that? So what's happening is that when I sharpen this pencil, it's leaving wood all up one side. I've actually had to take an X-Acto knife and make it and take off the wood on that side to make it usable. So Okay, so I just sharpened it. Do you see how the wood is remaining up on this side? The wood goes all the way to the top on that side and not on this side. And that is because the lead is not centered in the barrel. Now, I'm pretty sure I got this, yeah, I got this eggshell pencil from my 150 kit or whatever it is, 150, 120, I think it's 150. So, I mean, I had no control over it, and most of the pencils were good, but every once in a while you'll get one that's like this. So if you're buying your pencils open stock at a store, which I do once in a while to replace my pencils, you wanna make sure that your lead is centered in the barrel. Let's see if I can find a really good example. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want that much space. See the difference? This one is more centered. It's got it's more centered in the barrel, and so it's going to sharpen better. If you're buying a big set, you don't have control over that, but if you are buying them open stock, just take a second and look at your pencils so that you know that you're not going to you're not gonna have this problem. Okay, anyway, so I've got an order and I went to go and get another eggshell open stock and none of the stores around me that have open stock Prismas have this color. So I'm gonna have to order it online and so I'll order a couple. Thankfully the Prisma colors are the cheapest of the art artist quality and so it's okay. I put up with the oh, lack of quality control just because I like the pencil and yeah. All right, back to our mushroom. So we have, we're gonna start with deco yellow and we're gonna coat the whole cap in deco yellow. grab our darkest color which is going to be poppy red and we want this just right up at the top so we're going to put it right there at the top okay and then we're going to get pale vermilion we're going to go over the poppy and then bring it out past the poppy. Okay. Our 
remember this mushroom is going to get yellow pretty quick. So we just want to blend that out a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to grab our yellowed orange, go over all of that, and then bring this color down. And we're going to bring this down quite a bit. Quite a bit more than we did the other two. We're going to bring this down the side here and we're going to make it the shadow color behind this vegetation. Let's go back to our deco yellow. I want to go right over that, blend it into the yellow. Then as you get closer over here to the lightest color, just lighten your pressure. Okay. So use a little more pressure when you're over here trying to blend those other colors together. And then when you get on top of just the yellow, then lighten your pressure. Okay. All right. I'm going to grab just a little bit more poppy to put right up at the top. Okay, and you can make that more orange or more red. It's your coloring book page. You can make it how you want it. That's there and there. We have red there and there. Then we're going to do the other three are purple. Okay, so here's our purple mushroom that we did for our tutorial, and we want to put it in this page. Now I picked this mushroom because, uh, for a couple of reasons, uh, yellow and purple are opposite on the color wheel, and maybe we'll do a video on the color wheel and how to utilize it in our coloring. But for right now, just believe me. <laughs> purple and yellow are opposites on the color wheel and so they complement each other and they look very good next to each other and so that's one reason I picked the purple to go with it and the second is just that it is um, a good contrast and I think it'll just it'll work well to give it a nice contrast cool it down a little bit so that's what we're gonna go for and so I'll color probably this one and then you can color as many others as you want the purple. Okay, should we do that one? Should we do... Maybe we'll do this one just so we can do the underside. All right, so let's do the stock really quick. So we got Blue Violet Lake. We're just going to put light, light dusting of this color down. Okay. And then we're going to take 70% uh, cool gray 
And then we'll put this in the shadow. So here's the block here. And then we'll put it right up along this cap right there. Okay. Then we're going to grab 30% cool gray and just blend it out a little bit. Then we're going to go back to that blue violet lake. take just a touch of black down in this corner right here and then maybe right here okay give it some depth all right so that's the stock now let's take our blue violet lake pencil and we're going to coat the entire cap with this color so the underside side as well. Okay, now we want to take Imperial Violet and we want to add this. Now our light source is over here, so we want this to be the lightest right here. Okay, and then it'll be lighter out on this edge underneath. So let's kind of map that out. So we want the lightest kind of right here. So let's kind of where we would want the dark to kind of meet it. Okay, and we want up against this other mushroom is going to be in the shadow. So let's then take it up like that. Okay. And we want it to look rounded. So let's put just Pitch right along the edge. Okay. All right. Now we can do the rest of the top of the mushroom in this imperial violet. All right, then we want to leave kind of the, well, this is behind the other mushroom, so let's get it. And then we want to leave a little bit on the edge. Okay. And back here is going to be in the shadow, so let's take this all the way to the edge. And maybe right here we'll leave a little bit. Okay. 
All right, now let's grab our violet. And we want the violet to not come quite as far, so we'll bring it back here, kind of map it out. Like that, maybe. Okay, but we gotta get behind this mushroom because it's in the shadow. of the cap. Okay. Then let's take this down here that we got behind the mushroom. Definitely want that. And then we just won't take it up as far as we did the imperial. Then we have Dioxine Purple, and we want this just in the deepest, darkest shadow. So let's put a little right there. A little right there. Okay, we do have some definitely back here. Top a little bit. And then we definitely want this on this underside, real close to the stalk. Okay, then let's go back to that violet and we're going to go over that dioxine and over our previous violet to help blend it out. Okay, and then we're going to go to Imperial Violet and do the same thing. that little light spot. OK. 
Okay, and then take your blue violet lake and go over the whole mushroom with it. Making sure your pressure is the lightest right here. And then it can get, add a little more pressure into a medium pressure when you get over your other colors. Okay, now if you remember in our tutorial, we blended this one with a white pencil. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that again. You can blend with whatever method you would like, but I think I'm going to go ahead and blend with a white pencil again, just because I like that it lightens it up a little bit. Okay, so go ahead and finish your mushrooms and then when they're finished we'll go in and put in our white Posca paint. Or no, we're going to use a gel pen, our Uniball gel pen. So I'll be right back. Okay, we have our mushrooms done, so let's go ahead and use our Uniball Signo White Gel Pen to put in all of these dots.
Okay, here's our picture so far with our three different kinds of mushrooms in. I think it's looking really nice. Um, so this is a two-part video. This is just the first part. Um, I think before we end today's video, I think we let's go ahead and put in her uh, skin and her hair and let them we'll talk about the background and then we'll call it good for today so let's go ahead and zoom in on her skin okay so i have kept all of the pencils that i've used on so far on the mushrooms and we have um some different shades of yellow orange red uh purple and then different shades of gray that we've already used. We want to stick into this palette as much as we can. I think we will go ahead and add some olive greens just because we do have a lot of foliage in here. So I think we will add some olive greens. Um, for her skin, I want to kind of base it around this beige that we've already put in the picture. So I'm going to grab the beige and Let's see if there's any other. Probably use the cream. And then I'm going to grab um, light peach or a peach color. Let's see what we have. Now let's grab light peach and nectar. That gives us a good range to work with, I think, for a pale skin. All right, so let's go ahead and base coat it with our cream. She has an off-the-shoulder dress, so we'll make that skin. We're not going to see this cream show up very well, but it's just going to give us something to start blending on top of. Just base coating her hand as well. to our darkest color, the nectar, and let's put in those shadows.
Okay, then let's grab the beige and blend out from the nectar. So we're going to go right over the top of that nectar and then just pull it out a little bit. a lot of skin so we're working in a rather small areas which limits our ability to shade too much to get too detailed Okay, then let's grab the light peach and we're going to go over the nectar and the beige and then blend out. I think we're going to do um, skin tones for our next mini series and so we'll practice doing um, skin tones of all types of shades. So we've done fantasy skin tones in a mini series but this will be uh, more realistic skin tones so warm versus cool skin tones, light versus dark versus medium versus olive all sorts of skin tones. People come in so different shades and colors and I just, I love doing skin tones and doing people. I find it very enjoyable. So I thought we would do our next mini series around different skin tones that I've have done before or practiced before and share those with you. So it's 
kind of what I'm planning right now. Okay, and then we just go back to that cream and just blend it all together. Okay, let's grab a little nectar and put it in the corners of her lips. Along the bottom there of her lips. Then we're gonna grab light peach. And we're gonna fill in the rest of the way. Go right over the top of that nectar and blend it in together. Gives us a very light, kind of glowy skin, which I think will be good in contrast to our background, which I think we'll do next. Um, put those off to the side. We'll keep them out so we know we've used them and can utilize them other places. I think we'll wait and do this hair um, later after we do the foliage so I can see what color would work best. Um, so we're going to do the background and then we'll come back next week and finish her. Um, so I want, because we have these stars, I want a night sky and so I'm going to do black for the background and I'm going to use a Posca black paint pen to fill that in. It's easy to get into the little spaces and really close up. Um, and then if you have bigger spaces, you can go in with a paintbrush and acrylic black paint. You wanna use the craft paint because it's matte. If you use um, an, a, pro a professional grade heavy body paint, it is apt to be gloss and then it is harder to color over the top of if you want to add anything. And so it's better just to use your craft paint that you get at Michael's or um, any other craft store for a dollar than to use your professional grade paints in your coloring books. So this paint pen is just about out but you see you can get real dark with this and so you're just going to fill in all those little so you're just going to fill in all those little places with this and then if there's bigger pace places like up in the corner or anything you can go in with a paintbrush if you want to so I'll just finish coloring this in and then I'll show you what it looks like and we'll talk about what we're going to do next time.
Okay, we got our black background done, and now we're just going to take a, a yellow sparkly gold gel pen to do these stars real quick. Okay, we'll do some of these dots in the gold. And then the rest of them we'll do in the white. If you want to add any more little ones, you can with your pen, just dab them on. Okay. All right. Okay, so I think that's what we're going to leave it at today. And then on Wednesday, um, we will do all the foliage and her dress and her hair. And so that is that. So I hope you enjoyed putting these mushrooms into a picture and we'll finish it next time. Um, if you liked this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you join us and um, I will see you guys next time. Bye.